Hey guys, it's Tuesday, it's time for Facebook Live, and I have a really special project for you today, so I hope that you can take a few minutes and join me. Let's see, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Hmm, all right, we'll just leave it. <laughs> so it's Tuesday, it's been a very busy week here. Um, for those of you who, um, sent me an email yesterday to register for my new class. I'm not ignoring you. I wasn't ignoring you. I was just inundated with emails. You guys we were amazing. The request, the response was huge. Um, unfortunately, we have now depleted my supply of the Tea Together Framelits. I had a huge amount, um, more than I typically <laughs> use or sell in a class, and they're all gone. So uh, thank you. If you still wanna register for that Tea Together class, you can. They just won't come with the framelits, okay? So I'm gonna, I put a note um, over on the registration page, but I am gonna update that this afternoon on my blog and hopefully I can um, adjust that video too. So thank you everybody who's registered for the Tea Together class. Just know that the framelits option is gone, but you can still register, register for the stamp set only and for the no stamp set option. Well, hello everybody, I see you all jumping on. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it, like I said, it has been a very busy, busy day yesterday and today. Today I have spent almost the whole day cutting last week's Facebook Friday projects. Um, if you put an order in by Monday at midnight and you have earned yourself those projects, they will be going out tomorrow. I am was trying to print the labels right before we went on and of course technology issues, but they will hopefully be in the mail tomorrow. So so thank you so much for all of you for joining me today. This week my um, focus is this really fun best catch. And this, when I first saw this, it caught my attention right away in the Occasions catalog because it's so different. It's a masculine set, which we don't really necessarily have a ton of. Um, and I come from a long family, of fishermen and fisherwomen. My two youngest love to fish with their daddy and their grandfather, so this one really stood out to me. I always say for the guy in your life, but I know several women who love to fish, so it's not necessarily just masculine. And today's project is actually a case out of a magazine I'm gonna show you in a minute. Hello everybody, thank you so much for jumping on. Um, for those of you who have said that you are sharing, thank you, thank you, thank you, I always have a prize. And I have one more paper share. This is a sheet of every one of the papers in the Occasions catalog, and I will pick a winner on Friday during my Facebook Friday over on my group page. Um, so if you wanna be entered to win the, the whole stack of paper, um, just share the video on Facebook. Okay, so let's see. I really don't have a whole lot of announcements other than the storage by Stampin' Up is now available. It went available, it went online. What am I trying to say? It became available yesterday on the 1st of April and I actually have ordered all of it so I could show you but it hasn't arrived. I'm looking out my window. My UPS man has not arrived. He usually comes between right around, I don't know, during Facebook Friday time. So if he happens to show up, we'll see. We'll see. And I can't remember if it's coming in today's order or tomorrow's order. I have several orders coming this week because I have a giant event next week and I've been ordering things <laughs> slowly but surely. All right, so if you like the storage by Stampin' Up, you can get it. Um, you can put that order in as part of your uh, Facebook Friday order. And I meant to print out the, and I didn't do it, the host code for this week. It's the same as last week's host code. It's on my blog. So if you want to order some of that storage by Stampin' Up or anything, really, you can order anything for these Facebook Lives. Um, all orders using that host code through Monday at midnight will count towards my list of free make and takes, okay? You'll get those make and takes in the mail for free if you place that order by Monday. Also, if you've never joined me on Friday, make sure you hop over to my Pink Buckaroo Stampers group here on Facebook. I do three more projects on Friday. 
When I'm done with the video, I'll add the link up at the top. Um, everybody's welcome. Just click join. I approve everybody. There's no requirement to join. It's just an easier way to stay in contact as Facebook um, kind of hides our pages, which is what we're on right now. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera around and I do not have a fancy way of flipping the camera around. So if you don't like to get dizzy, cover your eyes for just a minute. We had a successful middle school sleepover um, last Friday. I told you guys we were, I was getting ready for my sixth graders middle school sleepover. And I have to say, they were the quietest group of middle school girls I have ever had the pleasure of spending time with. Um, it was just my daughter and then three others and they were really quiet. They, her room is on the opposite side of the house from the living room and from our bedroom, so that helped probably. Every now and then we would hear some squealing going on up there, but for the most part, they were really good and really quiet and pleasant, and it all went off without a hitch. So thank you for those of you who are asking. Okay, so today's project is this little fishing basket. This is not my original design. It comes from this magazine called Stampin' Success. If you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you get this magazine once a quarter, and we all run to our mailboxes to get it. We, we absolutely love this. This is one of my favorite perks. It has lots of um, project ideas. Um, it has interviews with demonstrators. It has ideas for your business. It's a really, really fun magazine. And um, I've been a demonstrator. It'll be 10 years um, this summer. And I have kept every single stamp and success that we have received. In fact, the first, I don't know, probably first five years, we used to get them every month. Um, but now we only get them once a quarter, which we are sad about. But anyway, this is a, one of those really good perks. So when I saw this project right here in this magazine, I immediately was struck with it. I had to make it. So last week I started playing around and there was a template online. Um, it says download a pattern for the basket, but I really was having trouble with the template. For one, I wanted to just print my cardstock through my printer and my printer flat refuses to print any of my cardstock except Whisper White. So, so then I was trying to trace it. I don't know. I just didn't, it wasn't working for me. So I came up with something different. I'm going to show you guys today. It's not a template. You'll be able to, to do it at home. And I left off the envelope because by the time I was done with all of this, I was ready to be done. <laughs> with that said, this is an advanced project. This is not your simple um, 3D project that I usually make. It I would not wanna make 50 of these. I would make three maybe for my dad, for my husband, and for maybe my father-in-law, but I'm not going to make any more than that. You'll see it. It's quite a few steps. So I left off that part and I did kind of tweak a few things. I did not emboss this top part, but for the most part, this is where I got the idea. And I'm even going to show you how to do this funky ribbon too. Okay. So let's see. The only stamp we're using today is this one. On Friday, we're going to use, um, maybe all of them, but today we're just using this. And I had to even ask my husband, what's this called? I didn't want to call it the same thing. And he just called it a fly. So it's for fly fishing. Um, I was calling it a lure, but I guess it's not a lure. It's a fly. Um, but that's what we're using today. And he says that these are trout. Is that right? Rainbow trout is what he said that was. So I'm just going, I Googled rainbow trout and that is what I'm going with. And if you want your fish to be something else or your fly to be a different color, feel free to do that, okay? Now, Amy, you're saying, why didn't I see the small fish in the stamp set? Because there's no small fish in the stamp set, right? That's one of the things I wanna point out to you is that the framelits that go with this set. I like this set, but I love the framelits. Um, here are the two fish. This piece, um, this framelit specifically, I really, really like that one. Um, there is a, a fly, a smaller one, that's just the framelit, and then there's this larger one that cuts out the stamped image. Then the basket and the hat, and then the large kind of, I don't know, what is he, jumping, jumping fish, and the, the guy that's fishing. Okay, so that's where those fish are. I'm gonna show you how I did those. All right, let's start by making the basket. Now, 
just a heads up, all these measurements are over on my blog. And as I'm saying that, I'm realizing I didn't even write it down for myself today. So let's see if I can figure it out. Let's see if I can remember. Usually I have it printed or written down and I don't have that today. What's wrong with me? I saw Denise on here. Denise came by. She saw the craziness that's going on in my office right now. I am preparing madly for several things and I'm going to pull those. Nope, here it is. I have it right here. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of crazy town around here. Here's the template that I printed out um, from Stampin' Up! And like I said, I just didn't really like it. So this is how we're changing it. You're going to need two pieces of crumb cake that are five and a half by seven and a half. And you're going to score, let's start with the long side. You're going to score the long side at one and seven eighths and five and five eighths. Then turn it and score the bottom or the short side at three and three fourths. Okay, so two pieces. The short side is three and three fourths. I'm glad I looked because I wouldn't have remembered these measurements. One and seven eighths and five and five eighths on the long side. Okay, now we're gonna trim it. Let's see, I don't think I need my Simply Scored anymore. We're gonna trim it. Oh, you know what we're gonna do though? We do need to mark it. So while you have your Simply Scored, get your pencil. Thanks for sharing, you guys. Get your pencil and make a mark at three-fourths there and three-fourths over here, which would be six and three-fourths, okay? So you're gonna do that on both of them. Now, I've already done one of them ahead of time to save us kind of on some time today because it's kind of a long project. So I'm just gonna do one. Now, I'm going to, on the sides, notice the ink on my thumb. I, that's Melon Mambo, was making tags for Facebook Friday um, just about an hour ago, and I stuck my thumb in the Melon Mambo ink. So I apologize if you guys have played with Melon Mambo, you know that there's no going to get that off until I take a shower tomorrow. So there's that. So just pretend like it's not there. Now what I'm doing is I'm cutting that, that score line right there on either side at an angle. I just kind of cut each of these tabs at an angle and cut that off. Um, instead of cutting it and then cutting and cutting, I just cut a V right there, okay? Now, let me get my trimmer. Hopefully it is, has, I have one that is missing the, the ditch right here, the thing and the mat, the cutting mat, and I keep grabbing that one. All right, so where you have made this mark right here, three fourths of an inch, you're gonna line that up there in your ditch the ditch is this part where the cutting blade goes. And you're gonna line the bottom corner right there in with the ditch. And we're gonna cut that at an angle, okay? Now come over here, do the same thing. Line up the mark with the ditch and cut. So then your piece is going to look like that. Your two pieces, you're doing it to two different pieces. Now this is really where I struggled with, yes, Amy, di Dawn Dish Soap does help, but not completely, it never completely takes it away. I have found that, whoops, sorry, I moved the camera. I have found that coconut oil helps um, get ink and specifically spray paint <laughs> off your fingers. Now this is the part where I struggled with a template. I could not get my, my um, embossing to line up. I just was making a huge mess of it. So that's why I decided instead of that one piece like the template showed to make these two pieces. This is the bottom and we don't need to worry about that being embossed, but we do need to emboss all of this. You are going to want <clears throat> whichever side of your cardstock you want to have raised, you know, the bump to come up, that's going to be against your embossing folder where the Stampin' Up! logo is. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this in here and I'm gonna try to stop right there at that fold line. So I'm gonna push it all the way in and pull it out just so that it's right there at that side, that line. Now, one thing you have to do also, well, if you push it in far enough, let's see, I'm gonna experiment. Will it fit? It will fit. Okay, I was folding it under, but if you just go down a little bit further, it fits perfectly. All right, so get that in there, and you're gonna use your regular platform. 
and just one clear plate. All right, so let's look at it. All right, now I need to come over and do this flap. So I am going to, my problem, and I'm sure that there's a better way for this, I just could not get my embossed lines to match up here in the middle. So I decided to have them match up there on the fold so that it really wouldn't matter because the fold is there. So now we're gonna stick it in just right there on so that the edge of that embossing mat is there on the fold line. And we're gonna run it through. This is a basket weave embossing folder, by the way, I did not mention that. It's in the annual catalog. All right, let's take a look at it. Now, if we fold that in, you can't even tell that I have pieced that together with the embossing folder. So there you go, that's how you emboss it. I have another piece over here because you've done two pieces, okay? Now you want to fold all your score lines. They're exactly the same. And you need a really strong adhesive. So I recommend tear and tape our Tombow liquid if you still have it. And um, Fast Fuse if you have it. Tombow liquid's available. Tear, um, Fast Fuse is not available anymore. Now I'm just realizing I need to cut these off. So on one of these, cut them off. You'd think I was just making this up as I go along, but I really actually have made two of these already. <laughs> it's just kind of complicated. Okay, so we've cut the squares off one. Let's put that there. All right, now we're gonna fold these in and just put a little bit of adhesive because I want it to stick to the side right there. Oh. Hi, everybody who's just joining. Thank you for joining me. We're making a basket, fishing basket. See how it goes just like that. And it's angled a little bit. That was also kind of a, you know, I'm gonna use tear and tape. That was kind of um, my struggle with just coming up with my own template and measurements is that be, it, it kind of, I don't know, it leans. The basket is angled. So, I, it took me quite a bit of time to get this. I thought it was gonna be quite straightforward, but it was not. All right, so now I'm gonna line those up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Line those up, let's try again. There we go. And line these up like that. Press it in and there's your basket. How cute, right? You would never know that I had a little boo-boo when I was embossing. I didn't really have a boo-boo, it just overlapped a little bit. All right, now let's make the lid. Your piece of soft weight cardstock for the lid needs to be three and three fourths by three and a fourth. And three and three fourths is how long it is right here. All right, so we're gonna turn it on the short side and we're gonna do one, and two and a fourth. And before we put it on, we're actually going to round the corners. I'm using the detailed trio punch, which I think is on back order right now. Burnish all your lines. It's gonna go in like this. But before we do that, let's ink it up with my sponge. What's happening? Try closing and reopening. Some, what's happening? I had trouble getting it to play, started over and it played. Which one are you talking about? This one, Shannon? Or is it something different? You never know. You never know with Facebook. I watched one this morning that was all garbled. I watched one yesterday that was pausing and stopping and playing and then pausing and stopping. You just never know. All right, so now before we put it on, there's also another little piece. And I'm gonna also, I don't remember the measurements of this one, but it's there on my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. Round that edge and let's ink it all up. And this one's going to be the latch that goes over. 
So we are just going to put it, we're gonna start right in that on that middle line right there and come over like that, all right? Now, let's see my tear and tape. Here on our back section, I'm gonna put quite a bit of tear and tape. All right. One by three, Mary, thank you. Are you looking at my blog? You'll be my assistant. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> I meant to write it all down, but I didn't. I just, as I was cutting it all this morning, I was just typing it in my blog. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna match that fold there. No need to score it. Slide this in on the back. Press that in. And then, see how it closes over? So cute. Now we used these magnets a few weeks ago um, when we made the post-it note holder. They have the positive and the negative, so get one of each, and then we'll get them to stick together. I have linked these on my blog too. You can get these on Amazon. That's the only, you know, I bought them a long time ago at a scrapbook store, and we don't have scrapbook stores anymore, so now I just get them on Amazon. They're by Basic Gray. All right, so I've stuck it there, and now I'm gonna peel off the other side and get it all lined up. Make sure it's lined up nicely. Press it in. This is kind of the hard part because I have to press that adhesive in, and the magnet is a little bit stronger before I do that. So let's make sure we get it in the right spot. Okay, little magnets, I know you wanna to stay together. There we go. All right, so now if I press it in, it'll snap closed and open. Do you guys love it? It's so cute. Um, now I've got a piece, and I can't remember, did I round these? I did. This is a, who, Mary, what's, what size is this? I believe it's 3 fourths by 11. Mary's checking me on my blog. And you could really just leave these unrounded if you want because it's gonna be mostly covered by a button. Um, Jen, I just said where I got the magnets. I have a link on my blog from Amazon. They come in different sizes. All right, so we've got this. And you know, because this is embossed, I might prefer to use liquid adhesive on some of this. I know you guys are gasping because you know how I feel about liquid adhesive, but I feel like it does stick a little bit better to these embossed sides. Gasp. Three fourths by 11, thank you, Mary. Mary Ann, I'm sorry, Mary Ann. Okay, now let's stick on the buttons. These are the true gentleman buttons. There we go. And while I have you guys, I want to let you know that next week I will be taking a Facebook Live break the whole week. We have on stage on Saturday, but on Friday I have a huge event. We've got 140 people registered and I will be getting ready for that. I'll be getting ready to, uh, to see a bunch of my team members and I'm um, just getting ready for on stage. So next week, even though it's here in San Antonio, I'm actually leaving. Like I'm gonna go stay downtown starting on Thursday. So next week there will be no Facebook Lives, but when I get back that Tuesday normal time, I will show you all my goodies from on stage, okay? So stay tuned. All right, so I glued those buttons on and I'm gonna let them dry. Now we're gonna make the little, the little thing, the little hangy down thing, <laughs> the little grouping of fishing materials. And as I told you in the beginning, this is a case from the catalog without a whole lot of specific instructions. So I kind of wing, was winging it on some of this. To make these fish, here are the framelits right here. And I cut them out first, then colored them but I found that they were so little, it was a little bit easier to get your sparkle, not sparkle, your shimmery white cardstock, and just color it first, 
and then let it dry and cut it out. I just found that was a little bit easier. So what I'm doing, these are my um, watercolor pencils in Calypso Coral and Old Olive. And I'm just gonna kind of blend the Old Olive first. And I like to make the, the color kind of go to, towards the center. That's why I'm turning the paper. And then clean off your brush a little bit and go in and kind of blend in that Calypso Coral. It does get a little bit muddy, but that's okay. It's a fish, right? It's a fish from the lake. And if you've ever caught a fish from the lake, they're a little bit yucky. All right, then after it dries, take your fish framelits and cut them out. Now, you'll notice if you look closely on my um, mine, I tied them on and everything before I colored the back. So then I cut out another one, colored it and realized, oh, it's not, you know, like it was, I needed to color the other side. So anyway, they're sandwiched, but you don't need to do that. That was just me being not planning ahead very well. So what I did is I cut mine out this time and I've colored the back of them so that when it turns around like that, you're gonna only see the fish. All right, now I stamped the fly in Versamark on, I'm thinking, hold on, on <laughs> Smoky Slate and I embossed it with silver embossing powder. Now, this is the tricky part, getting this on live television to go through this tiny little eye. Hmm, we may fake it. We may have to fake it, because it's really tiny. All right, one more try, one more try. So what you're gonna do is, to, oh, perfect. You're gonna tie these little fish in through the eye you're going to tie them onto some of this. Um, it's old olive. I've lost my words. It is old olive linen thread. Old olive linen thread. All right, so tie that. Hello, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. All right, so we want this to, to fold in half like that. All right, and then I'm gonna cut it a little bit. It's a little bit long. And then these guys kind of, they're gonna stick on there in a minute, but we already have them, we cut them out. Let's do this part. Now, some of you are gonna watch me do this and you're gonna say, no thanks, I'm good. But I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you don't like it, then just do a bow. This, and you have seen me, if you have been around me for a while, you know I like to pull the threads out of my ribbon. This ribbon's a little trickier because it's not, it's not really designed like that. Um, so what you do, and we're trying to keep them together, <laughs> these little ones. So I've cut the long edge, and I'm just gonna start pulling out these fibers, okay? And I actually think that if you cut it in half, you're gonna have a better time of pulling them out. This is the 3 8 inch. Well, I didn't do a very good job cutting that. The 3 8 inch real red cotton ribbon. All right, so we're just gonna pull them. Boy, I did a butchered job on this one. All right, so just slowly get them to come out. They don't come out easy of this ribbon. This isn't a ribbon I would normally think to pull the fibers out of. They, I don't know, they have to be kind of made differently. But you're gonna get them in a line, in a stack. So we've got real red. Now here comes the real tricky one. The teeny tiny grapefruit grove. I was able to tell what the, the artist used on the supply list and these were the ribbons that she used. And I believe she also used some silver thread, but we're not doing that. <laughs> I draw the line. Um, that stuff really goes crazy. All right, pull these threads out. It's gonna be worth it because it's gonna be so cute, but you can see how you would not necessarily wanna make 50 of these. You would definitely, this part, you would definitely need to adapt, do something different. Okay, all right, 
Now, I think we've got enough <laughs> for now. I'm saying we have enough. There, you can see how they look all kind of funky. And you've got all these fibers all over your desk. Now take your, thank you, Betty, that's sweet. This is our copper trim, all right? And what I did to get it to really kind of stay in place is I took a glue dot and I set it right there. And then I took the fibers and set it right on that glue dot. And then let's trim this a little bit. We're going to start, I feel like I have to hold my breath, start wrapping that copper trim around to keep those fibers together. See what I'm talking about? This is, this is uh, quite involved. It takes a lot of your fine motor skills and good lighting. Okay, now get another glue dot and put it right there. But doesn't that look neat? I mean, that looks like a, like a fishing lure or a fly, I guess, is the real word for these flies, but I love it. And then you can kind of just trim those like that. There we go. Cute, right? Cute, 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 worth it. All right, now we're gonna assemble this. Yes, labor of love, that's a great way to describe it. You know, if I was gonna give this as a gift, I might even pull out my hot glue gun for this because I'm, I would be so worried that the little glue dots aren't gonna hold this on here. And now that we've, you know, really put all of our love into this, we don't want it to fall off. So I would probably hot glue this. So I'm putting our little string of fish here. And then I'm gonna take one of these. Now, you can only adhere it to the lid because remember the lid comes up so you can't, because I thought at first I could you know, kind of adhere these little fish where I wanted them, but then I realized, well, the lid comes off, so then you couldn't, whoops, then you couldn't open the lid if they're stuck to the, to the basket. So I'm adding my little flies to the lid here. Let's see, you can kind of rearrange the fish. They're not gonna stay in place anyway. I don't know why I'm even trying. All right, let's do another one here like that and then our little fancy 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 whatever it is I should have asked my husband to draw a di diagram with all the words <laughs> yeah, I don't know the words and there we go there we go all right and we have a little basket a little gift fishing basket wouldn't it be cute like if you put if you guys do you have a Bass Pro Shop where you live, Bass Pro Shop has really fun like candies and you know, really neat things. You could put those in there and then a gift card too would go in there. You've got the little snap and then you could tell your husband that he better display it at work and he better ooh and ah over it because you really took some time to make him something fancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the basket. Now the picture I showed you guys, let's see if I can find it again, I've lost it now. It had, oh here it is, they had an envelope on here, which I'm assuming was made with the envelope punch board. So you could make a little envelope even there, probably a two by three to put your gift card in. But at this point I was done, I told you, I'm not making anything else, I'll throw the gift card inside. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Maybe, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a more advanced project than we normally do, but it's really cute. I wouldn't make these as kid party favors because they would never appreciate it, but someone you love who likes to fish would really love it. Ah, uh, you guys, thanks for the hearts. Okay, gummy worms and sour fish, Amy, excellent idea. Yep, or just some nuts, you know, some, um, I don't know, peanuts or just, I don't know. They sell all kinds of little snacks, um, like at Bass Pro Shop. They have homemade fudge too. That might be a really nice one. And Bucky's would be good if you're in Texas and you know Bucky's. They have really cool snacks too that would go with this. 
Okay, you guys, that's it for me. You can hop over to pinkbuckaroo.com to get the measurements, to look at the, the pictures more closely. There's a supply list there too. Um, oh, uh, let me show you a sneak peek for Friday. I already have those done. I meant to grab a sneak peek. We'll be making one of them. This is a gift card holder. See, there's those cattails. I just love them so much. So here's one, but I've got two more. So if you like the best catch bundle, make sure you come back on Friday over at Pink Buckaroo Stampers Group at two o'clock central on Friday. You guys, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for being kind today as I fumbled through some of this. I appreciate it. You guys are great. Have a wonderful week and I will see all of you on Friday. Thanks so much. Bye.